Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. Welcome to our next class. In this class, we will learn about arrays. An array is a special type of variable, or technically an object. It stores multiple values using a single value variable name. You would use an array for a list or collection of items, rather than using individual variable names. An array is created using the array object. Notice that the letter A is uppercase. The elements in an array always begin with the index value of zero. Every array has a length property based on the number of elements in it. Here is an example of how we would create an array. The first thing we need to do is to create an instance of the array object. That is accomplished using the new constructor. This is a JavaScript keyword. We learned about this two weeks ago when we looked at the date object. So here on the right hand side of the assignment operator we have new array and that instance of the new array is stored in this variable on the left called myArray. Should we wish to populate this array while it's being created, you would populate it by individually assigning a value to each array element index. Here we have myArray0, myArray1, myArray2, myArray3. So inside those brackets, notice they are brackets, not parentheses, we have the number. Arrays always begin at 0. Generally speaking, in most programming languages, collections always begin at zero. There are other ways to create an array. In this screen, on the right-hand side of the assignment operator, here we still have the new constructor and the array object with the opening and closing parentheses, but this time it contains values so we can actually create and populate at the same time. Those individual values would still be accessed using the array element index. One more other way that you can create an array is by using brackets and populating the values inside that brackets. Notice in this example there is no new constructor. That is because when JavaScript sees the brackets, it automatically knows that we're talking about an array. So this is a shorthand way of creating an array and populating it at the beginning. You also can just create an array and then populate it later. This is my choice. This is the first method we looked at. The reason I like this is because it shows you exactly what you're doing. So on the right hand side of the assignment operator here we have the new constructor new array. So if you're new to JavaScript it's a good idea to learn the long way because it reinforces the concepts. So we're looking at the array object so this object is now being stored in the variable on the left my array. So we now will populate it individually by listing the element indexes one by one. So here we see um, the element indexes enclosed in brackets and every element has the same name as the initial array except that we reference individually the individual elements by their index value. Now, how would we retrieve a single element from the array? So this is the same array that we just looked at. And if you look at the bottom of the screen here in the alert, and remember, when I echo back an alert, a lot of times I like to combine it with a literal. So it gives me 
a better understanding of what it is I'm looking at rather than just looking at a string or a word such as apples. All right, so if I wanted to f retrieve the value of my array index 0, that is exactly how I would do it, the actual variable name, my array index 0. So you want to look at that as a variable. Although it's part of an array, it is still a variable in the, in the sense that it will return a value. Now, supposing you wanted to retrieve all the elements at once, you could do that using, and, and here I have an alert as an example, and just by using the name of the array itself will automatically return all the values it holds. So if you look to the right at this um, My Alert box, notice how nicely JavaScript lays everything out for you. It comma separates them, it doesn't even put a comma at the last one. All right, every array has a length property, which enables us to determine how many elements are in the array. So here we have four elements. And if we were to use an alert, and if you take a look at my alert statement, here I have a literal so that I know what I'm testing, it would give me the result of four. There are four elements in the array. So the length of the array is actually the last index value plus one. Now you have the ability to modify an array or actually modify the individual elements in that array. And this is very similar to just rewriting a value in a variable. So if you wanted to change the value of my array index 3, and if you look at the statement I have below, all we're doing is reassigning a value from the right to the left. Very similar to just reassigning a value to, to a variable. We also can add an element to the array, and if that were to happen, it would automatically add it at the bottom. All right, so this is where the length property comes in very handy. We already talked about the length is actually one more than the last index element value. So therefore, it doesn't, we don't have to know what the last index element value is. All we know is the length is going to be the next one. So here we have my array and in brackets the expression my array dot length. My array dot length is always going to be one more than the last index. So that would be a good way of actually adding something to the bottom because that would be the next element that it would be added. All right. When you hear of an array, you might think of looping. Loops and arrays go together very well because arrays are collections and sometimes we want to loop through a collection for different reasons. So here we have a for loop. We have the same array up in the upper top of our screen here. Here's our traditional for loop. Here we have for var i equals zero. i is less than my array dot length. Now remember the length is one integer higher than the last element index. So if we're going to loop through this, we're going to, we don't have to actually know how many elements are in there. We just know that we're only we're not going to, we're going to keep on looping until we hit the length because the length is always one integer more than the last array element index. So if I wanted to execute the statements inside the curly braces, which is an alert, just to test the values, we could actually loop through this. We would get four different alerts, and every time around the loop, the array index value would change, and the alert would start with zero all the way up to one, uh, all the way up to three. There is another loop in JavaScript that is only used for an array, and this is called the for in loop. The syntax for a for in loop, this is the general syntax, var some element index in some array name, and then inside the curly braces, the statement is to be executed. So rather than saying for i equals something, i is less than something, i plus plus, all we need to do is to state the element index, which is generally i, 
um, and the um, array name. And because it is a for loop for an array, it is automatically going to start at zero because that's where arrays start at. So you don't have to say for i equals zero. All you have to do, and if we look at our for in loop actually, here we have for and in parentheses var i, that's our element index in my array. So it's saying that for every index in the array, we're going to keep on looping. And this is a very easy, convenient way of looping through an array rather than using a traditional for loop. Although you will probably see more people using a traditional for loop than this um, syntax. There are several methods that allow us to manipulate arrays, join them, remove elements, different places, add elements, and these are discussed in the book. And I would finally like to go over the um, mailing, join the mailing list example at the end of this chapter. So if you look, we have a very simple form, and we've already looked at this form from the last chapter where we're comparing, uh, looking at values in the, form, in the text boxes. The last text box is a state code text box. And the way the author has this set up, um, you have to enter one of four state code values. Although you wouldn't know it to look at the form, but that's the way he's working it. So what we're looking at now, we're just looking at the HTML. So here's input type equals text, ID equals state code. All right. Now what the author is doing in the next screen here, he is creating a function to determine if the user entered the correct state code. So the user enters a state code, and when they click the button, it's going to call this function. And the name of the function is um, stored, st function is stored in the variable called state code lookup. Now these are the, the allowable states: California, Washington, Oregon, Nevada, etc. Now the first thing he's doing, he's going, he's testing user input. So whenever we test literally text that someone enters in a box to see if it's correct or not, you have to realize that the, the user could cat, could type it in uppercase, lowercase, mixed. So what you generally do is you convert what the user typed to either upper or lowercase and then compare it to that same case. So here what the author is doing, he is actually first converting it to uppercase so that he can compare it to his uppercase values. And what he's doing, he's looping through all the values. And if one of them matches true, um, that's fine. If not, we return false, and then there's a problem, and we have to give the user a message to go back and um, fix the form. So this is a, using collections as arrays that, that we can look loop through, because he's creating an array here of these states, and we're looping through them that this is a very common practice in programming, especially with forms where you have multiple values for one field, such as radio buttons and drop-down lists. So we will cover this again in the future. So ultimately, he's in his validation code here. Here we have an if condition with the not um, operator. So if not state code lookup, state code, meaning if that returned false, then we're going to give them an error message. If not, um, everything is fine, we're going to go on. But what, it, what this if is doing, it's calling the state code lookup function that we just looked at, which is actually looping through that array and seeing if we find a match. And if we find a match, everything is fine. If not, then this if statement returns true, meaning it's not. Um, and is valid as false, and then we're going to have to, or tell the user to fix their entry.